Hi everyone, I'm teacher Luke, an expert Duolingo English test teacher, and in this video, we're going to look at the different ways you can improve your production score. So, by far, the most common question I get asked on my Facebook group and in the YouTube comments is, how can I improve my production score? And this is not surprising. In all the other English tests, like the IELTS and TOEFL, the production element, that is the speaking and writing part, is usually the hardest for most students. So in this video, I'm going to talk all about the production subscore on the Duolingo English test. I'm going to take a look at the different question types that contribute towards your production score, the marking criteria, and of course, I'm going to give you a few tips to help you improve your production score. But before I start, if you think this video is going to be helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really does help me a lot. Okay, so let's first take a look at all the different question types that contribute to your production subscore. The Duolingo English test has seven different question types in total. And if you go to the Duolingo English test website, you can find information on all of these different question types. The ones we're going to focus on today is, of course, the production element. So if we zoom in to this section, we can see that the production subscore is made up of your speaking and writing. But there are different kinds of speaking and writing questions on the Duolingo English test. So let's take a look at those now. Let's start with the writing questions. The first one I'm going to show you is describe a picture. And it looks like this on the test. For this, you have 60 seconds to write at least one sentence describing the image. And in total, you will have this question type three times during the test. I made a video showing you how to answer this question type really well. There is a link in the description below. The next writing question type is to write about a topic. For this, you have to respond to a prompt or a question, and you need to write at least 50 words. And you have five minutes to do this one. This question type, in my opinion, is the hardest on the whole test. And I think a lot of students lose points because they can't answer this question type well. But luckily, you only have to do this question type once in the whole test. To get a good score on this, you need to be able to write a full paragraph in an academic style. I also made a video discussing this question type. You can find it in the description below. Okay, so those are the two writing questions that contribute to your production score. Now let's take a look at the speaking ones. Actually, the speaking ones are quite similar. The first one is to describe an image through speaking. So similar to the writing one, but you got to do it through speaking. For this, on the speaking one, you have 90 seconds to describe the image. And you must speak for at least 30 of those 90 seconds. You'll get this once in the test. The next speaking task is a lot more difficult in my opinion, and it is to speak about a topic for 90 seconds. But there are two different types of this. The one you see here is speaking with a written prompt. So you get some written questions that you have to read and you have to respond through speaking. Basically, you simply have to answer the questions that you see and you have 90 seconds to do this. But there is another type and that is responding to a prompt or a question, but through listening. So you have to listen to the question and answer through speaking. You won't be able to see the question in writing, which of course makes it a lot harder. You have to listen, remember the question, and respond. Overall, you have to do this question type three times in the test. Two of them are with a written prompt, and one is through listening. So those were the different question types that contribute to your production subscore. And based on this, you can understand why some students have a hard time getting a good score in production, because these question types are really difficult to answer well. Like I mentioned, I have made videos covering all of these different question types. You can find the links below in the description. So those were the different questions, but what is the criteria? How are you actually marked? And how can you improve your score? Well, luckily, on the Duolingo English Test website, they do show us the criteria. 
So I'm going to show you that now and I'm going to give you tips on how you can improve your production score based on the criteria. So let's look at that now. When you go onto the Duolingo English Test website, you can find this information. They actually show you what the criteria is for the extended speaking and writing tasks, which all contribute towards your production score. As you can see, the production questions are marked based on these elements. Grammatical accuracy, grammatical complexity, lexical sophistication, lexical diversity, task relevance, length, fluency and acoustic features. Some of these words are tricky. Lexical basically means vocabulary and acoustic features means pronunciation. So that is how the Duolingo English Test production score is evaluated. It's based on those seven key points. And it's great that the Duolingo team shared this with us because it means that you can focus your studies on these key points in order to improve your score. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna go through these points individually, one by one, and give you some really useful tips on how you can improve on each part. So let's get to it. So we're gonna look at these one by one and I'm gonna give you some tips. I combined some of them to make it easier for me to teach you. And we're gonna go through it in this order. Grammatical accuracy and complexity. Then lexical sophistication and diversity. Like I said, lexical just means vocabulary. Then we'll look at task relevance, length, and fluency. Okay, so for grammatical accuracy, these are three key points you need to think about. You need to be able to make mostly error-free sentences. To do this, you shouldn't be making simple mistakes, and most of your sentences in your writing and speaking are error-free. If you can do that, you'll get a much higher score. Next, you want to be able to use a wide range of grammatical structures, different clauses, using conjunctions, and also a variety of complex structures. So I'm going to give you some tips, and specifically, I'm going to focus on the last two, a wide range of grammatical structures and a variety of complex structures. So I'll take a look at the answer to this question. Describe the kind of accommodation you live in. This question might come up in the writing or speaking sections. The student answered like this. I live in an apartment. I really like my apartment. It's modern. It's conveniently located. The apartment is in the city center. It's close to my school. It only takes me 10 minutes to walk to school. The apartment is a bit small. I'd like to find a bigger one in the future. Even though the answer I just showed you had no errors, each sentence in it is absolutely perfect. The problem is that it only contains simple sentences. There's no variety and there's no complexity. If you answer like this, even with perfectly written sentences, you will get a low score because you need to show that you have a range of grammatical knowledge and you're able to use a wide range of structures. So let's take a look at a better answer to this question. In order to change this example to make it better, to give a wide range of grammatical structures, you might want to change it to something like this. I live in an apartment which I really like. It's modern and conveniently located. It's in the city center and close to my school. In fact, it only takes me 10 minutes to walk there. Since the apartment is a bit small, I'd like to find a bigger one in the future. So as you can see here, this answer uses a much wider range of grammatical structures, and it includes a variety of complex structures. Complex structures are simply when you combine more than one idea into one sentence. Like in sentence one, I live in an apartment, I really like my apartment, that can be easily combined like this. I live in an apartment which I really like. So learning and being comfortable using different types of grammatical structures will help you get the highest score for grammatical accuracy and complexity. Okay, now let's move on and take a look at lexical sophistication and diversity. Remember, lexical just means vocabulary. To get a good score for lexical sophistication and diversity, you want to again use a wide range of vocabulary precisely. So you don't want to be repeating the same words over and over again, 
Instead, you can use different synonyms to show that you have a wide vocabulary. In addition to that, you want to use vocabulary that fits the style. This Duolingo English test is an academic test, so you want to be able to use academic and formal vocabulary correctly. And lastly, you want to be able to use collocations. Collocations are words that combine naturally together. So again, let's take a look at an example of how you can improve. And I'm going to take a look at the first point, which is using a wide range of vocabulary precisely. So again, here's an example, and I'll let you know from the start, this is not a good example because there are too many repeated words. So this is the question. This question would more likely appear on the writing part of the test, but it might appear on the speaking part. So let's read it together. I agree that students should be required to attend all classes for two reasons. One reason students should be required to attend classes is for discipline. Without the pressure of mandatory attendance, many students might think that classes are not important. Most university students are teenagers or in their early 20s, thus are still learning how to manage their lives. Without mandatory attendance, I believe that many students will lack the discipline to attend classes on a consistent basis. Another reason is, and so on, so on. So as you can see here, this answer includes many repeated words. In this short paragraph, we see the word students five times and the word classes four times. In order to get a higher score in production, you want to be able to use a wider range of vocabulary. And you can simply do this by using synonyms. So what are some synonyms for students? Well, firstly, we can have learners. In university, we have the younger students, they are called freshmen. And for classes, we can obviously change it from classes to lessons or lectures. This is a simple example, but it shows how using repeated words can lower your score. So when possible, try to use synonyms and show the Duolingo test that you do have a wide vocabulary. So far, we've looked at two parts of the production criteria. And actually, I believe those two are the most important and the areas where most students struggle with. So if this is you, be sure to practice using a wide range of vocabulary and grammar when you're doing your practice tests or when you're studying for this test. Make sure you're comfortable and you're able to use those different grammar structures without many errors. All of that combined will surely improve your production score. But that's not it. Now let's take a look quickly at the three other sections of the production subscore. Okay, the next part I want to look at is task relevance. So this basically means, are you able to respond to the task, the questions or the prompt correctly? And to do this well, you should think about these three things. Firstly, are you able to fully address all parts of the task? Some questions might have more than one section to it, so you have to read the question carefully and respond to all parts of the task. Also, are you able to present a clear position or present your ideas clearly? And lastly, are you able to provide supporting ideas which add more information to your main point? So let's take a look at one of the writing questions on the Duolingo English practice test. It says, films can tell us a lot about the country where they were made. What have you learned about another country from watching its movies? So keeping in mind task relevance, what do you actually have to write about? So firstly, you need to consider that this whole topic is about films and movies. Then the question is, what have you learned about another country from watching its movies? So the task is asking you to share your experience about the things you've learned about another country from its movies. We call this a recount. A recount is basically just talking or writing about your experience. So to answer this well in regards to task relevance, this is what I would do. I would pick one country, maybe India for example, because Bollywood movies are of course very popular. Then I would think of two things that I have learned. 
And of course, I would always give lots of examples. So I'm talking about India, I'm talking about two things I learned from Indian movies, and I'm giving examples to back up my answer. This is how you answer a question well according to task relevance. Remember, task relevance is vitally important. The next point is length. So for the describe a picture through writing, you have one minute and you have to write one full sentence. I recommend that you try to write more than one sentence because if length is in the criteria, it suggests to me that the more you can write, the higher your score for this section. Then we have another writing task, which is write about a topic. For this, you have five minutes to do it, and they say you need to write at least 50 words. But again, because length is being evaluated, it suggests to me that you should be writing more than 50 words. In five minutes, I think you can write anywhere between 100 and 200 words. For the describe a picture element, through speaking, you have 90 seconds. And for talking about a topic, again, you have 90 seconds. For both of the speaking questions, they say that you should be speaking for at least 30 seconds. However, one more time, I think you can be talking longer than that. And I think it will help you to get a better score if you are able to talk for longer. And lastly, we have fluency and pronunciation. So fluency in writing and speaking involve things like linking sentences and linking ideas well. To do this well, you should be using different linking words like firstly, next, additionally, moreover. You can use those in speaking and writing and they show fluency. Also for the speaking sections, pronunciation is important. You need to be able to speak very clearly, but you do not need to have a native accent. Instead, make sure you speak clearly and at a good speed. So not too fast, but also not too slow. And for writing, we have to consider spelling and punctuation. Unfortunately, when you're writing your answer on a Duolingo English test, there is no spell checker. And I know nowadays we all use programs like Grammarly or Microsoft Word, which correct our spellings for us. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen on a Duolingo English test. So make sure you remind yourself of spellings of difficult words before you take the test. Okay, that's a brief overview on the different tasks and the criteria of the subscore with a few little tips for you. Of course, there are more things you can do to improve your subscore, and I made videos covering all of these tasks in a lot of detail, so definitely watch those. The link is in the description below. If you have any questions for me about this video, let me know in the comments, and also join my Facebook group where you can ask questions to me and other people in the group. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.